And we're back guys. What is up YouTube? It's been so long since my last podcast it feels like. This is podcast episode 45. And yes, I'm talking about Kanye West and his uh, appearance on the Joe Rogan podcast. It was much anticipated. He was saying I wanted to get on there and voice his opinion. And Kanye West for president? Really? I don't know. Make what you will. I mean, I love his music. Um, he's an intense guy. A lot of information that he's trying to get out in this podcast. I couldn't absorb it all because it's just so much at once. So many good ideas and stories about his life and the things he's been through with mental health and where he is today, really. And his newfound faith in religion that he doesn't swear anymore. That's very different to the old Kanye that musically I fell in love with and a lot of people did. He's changed now but I like a lot of his music I'll be honest. And he is inspiring. Like I said about Matthew McConaughey who was on another episode of the Joe Rogan podcast um, and now I'm talking about it on this podcast. Um, it's a podcast I watch a lot. I learn a lot from Joe Rogan is, is the best in the game really. Um, and yeah, Kanye West for president, apparently. I mean, Trump, yeah, he helps the economy immensely in America. And if he goes, yeah, the economy will suffer. So a lot of rich people are like, nah, we need him to stay. You know, uh, Joe Biden's not any better. His son uh, is a bit dodgy in some ways, and he probably is too. Like, none of them are any better than the other, you know what I mean? None of them can be trusted. I'm not going to get into actual presidents. It, today is more about Kanye West and understanding a man that is truly misunderstood in many ways. And today we're going to dig into it and get to the bottom of it, get to the, to the reason why he does what he does and why he is the man you see today. Um, you know, the brand Yeezy, you know, the rapper, um, the guy that's running for president potentially. Well, he's not, but um, people really want him to. Uh, but there's a famous tweet uh, that Jennifer Aniston put online saying how, don't vote for Kanye, it's not funny. And then he comments, um, neither was friends. So, like, he's just jokes. And it's, there's, a, there's a funny, nerdy side to him that I didn't realise there was. Like, he loves Star Wars. He wouldn't stop talking about Star Wars. And maybe he didn't even know that about Kanye West. Of course, his wife is very famous too, but we're here to talk about him and the type of man he is, really. So yeah, strap in for this one. And I know it's been three minutes, but yeah, I'm going to roll the intro. It's been a, a bit too long. I wanted you to be inside my arms where the night goes down. So yeah, he starts the podcast with, you know, recently he had an epiphany about becoming president. He said it's a calling from God. He said it came to him in the shower, randomly, that he wanted to be president and that he had to be the leader of the free world. You know, he said if someone like Ronald Reagan has been in politics, not having particularly a particularly large political background if he made it why can't he but then Joe Rogan cuts in and says well um, that's not entirely true he was like was he a governor or a senator before so Joe Rogan says why can't you be you know the governor of California senator or something um, start from there and work your way up you know surely that could work could take years though why not you know why not try that but um he says it's not down to Joe Biden or Trump or either of them. He just believes God chose him with his new his newfound religion. Because uh, when he was young, I don't think he was that religious. You, you could tell from his music. But yeah, he said it came to him in the shower, this idea to be president. And he believes it. And if you believe something, well, that's going to get you in the door at least. And, you know, so, surely, surely, Kanye West is a man that's busy enough 
fighting record labels, you know, his brand. You know, he recently actually, you probably know about this, his most recent thing, he um, shared the actual contract he has, his like, music contract, he shared all the details online. Because when, it, I'll get into it later, but when he said slavery was a choice, he meant slavery was a choice in his case, like, he signed these contracts and he's a slave to the money now. But yeah, he goes on to say that, like, these record labels literally take advantage of the art, the artists and rape them in his eyes. Like, it's probably, yeah, it's probably the most exploitative kind of job there is to be an artist in all these record labels. They want your talent and your time and then a lot of people, like, they don't make it out the other side because it's just pressure and pressure to be better and better and make the money in, in some degree. And I don't know the ins and outs of record labels, but, you know, other artists like Prince did not agree with how record labels treated artists. And, they, like, he's trying to make his own record label. Prince was very against record labels back in the day. It's true to some degree... I mean, I mean, they do use artists for their own, their own gain. Sadly, that's the music business. We don't see all that when we see the album come out. And we know Kanye West, he's a very controversial guy. We know that. And he's known for that. And he spoke about how, like, Prince, he reckons Bob Marley, Bruce Lee, um, with their deaths are conspiracies, and that they were murdered, you know because they went up against uh, higher powers, like government or record labels, you know. But Kanye West is not a whole... He's not what you said, call a cold-hearted politician. He loves people, he wants to make the world a better place. And sadly, we haven't got enough politicians that want to do that. And do I think it's realistic for him to be president? Not really, no. I don't know, I don't know, it's not my place to say. Uh, anyone's better than Trump in terms of a compassion point of view. But Trump is very patriotic, his dad was quite a far, like, right-wing kind of patriotic uh, American. And Trump, before being president, he acted very liberal. But he, is, he has got right-wing beliefs. Not right-wing, but like, you know what I mean? that way is that way inclined and Kanye is a guy that cares about the people and there's not many politicians with that with that in their DNA sadly you know they care about the economy or what they look like in the public eye but from Kanye West's point of view it's quite strange to see him as a religious guy that doesn't swear or anything anymore because I'll be honest I like the old stuff the older music well, he did swear, you know. Um, but he really doesn't let Joe get a word in in his podcast. It's immense. It's just Kanye all the way. And Joe's just absorbing everything. And Kanye feels guilty, like, sorry to bombard you with all these things. And how do you formulate a question from what I'm saying? He doesn't understand that. But Joe is the best, like I've said. But, I mean, this guy, Kanye West, has been through so much. And difficult moments and many health issues over the years, mental health issues that have affected him, and we've seen that in the public eye many times, criticised for the thing he says, but many people don't understand mental health, therefore they can't even comprehend the level that Kanye's thinking is at, and sometimes maybe he goes overboard, but don't we all, are we human? We're all human, you know? To err is human. It does cause a lot of stress to many artists and cause them to go over the edge. And yeah, but since he found God in his case, he seemed to have got better at dealing with it all. And nobody teaches you how to deal with fame or any of that. Um, and then he moves on a bit, speak on racism, of course. And now his dad was in the Black Panthers, which is a black rights movement. Uh, I don't know if that's the right terminology to use. Um, anyway, that was back in like the 70s and 80s. 
Um, but now, if you search Black Panther, you only see the Marvel movie. You know, so it's twisted in that way that from what a political movement was, maybe, yeah, yeah, of course they were aggressive in their style, but you can't even find that online because you, ter- you search Black Panther and the movie comes up. And yet, it is obviously a movie where there's a black superhero, which is great. But the people who created that superhero um, are white. And it's designed by a room of white people put out by a white company. Therefore, where's the authenticity there? Right, mad respect for, for Chadwick Bosman, but yeah. Where's the respect there? Like all these white people in the office decide this. So they're kind of manipulating people into believing a certain thing. Um, so the agenda, you've got to think of the agenda there. And of course, he says Black History Month reminds people, black people in America of previous generations who were slaves. But he said it's, it's programmed into people via the media and the curriculum, you know, that of this difficult time makes me reminded of that so you think you can't be anything more than what you are because you're reminded of this terrible history that affects all of us regardless of the colour of skin um, and yeah I don't I don't disagree um, you know and then Joe's trying to move the conversation on and going like why do people think you're crazy Kanye why you know he says this is interesting what he says it's like he just tells the truth and that in a world of lies the truth is crazy and that is exactly what people saw from what he was saying he spoke the, his mind and people saw it as crazy you know he was labelled mentally unhealthy by the world as a result sadly the world can't understand someone who has a lot on their mind and cares for the world and there's been times when I've said to myself he's an idiot he doesn't know what he's on about but this opens my eyes, makes me understand what he's really like. Um, he gives out all this knowledge, you know, and information, some of it true, but all of it from the heart, you know. Um, and people see that as meant to be unhealthy in some ways. Um, for me, he just thinks outside the box, you know, different way of looking at a situation. You know, I mean, he was put on medication because doctors believed he was bipolar. And it was mainly around the time when he said, Slavery was a choice. But like I said, what he meant by that was him personally. A lot of black artists sign a record label deal with these white corporations that are just there to exploit them and make money off of them. They don't actually care about the individual. It's like a money-making machine. And if you care about money that much, you don't care about people. You know That's why the world capitalism is so unhealthy for people who respect other human beings you know it's the complete enemy of you know peace is capitalism in some ways so what I'm saying is in a world of capitalists who just care about money um, people like him are needed, we need more people like him and I don't know if they're in government or what if there's another way to influence people and help change the world for the better really Kanye West or no Kanye West? So then the conversation goes on to, you know, what did that medication do to you? As a person, Joe was asking. And he said it killed his creativity and really killed his confidence. And two things that he needs. I mean, he's a guy that is confident in himself. He hasn't, he doesn't hate himself necessarily. Um, he cares about the world. So for him to lack confidence and creativity, that's going to stop him doing what he does being yay, you know, being Yeezy, being who he is. I mean, don't take it literally. It's not to say the medication doesn't help people in this situation. Sometimes it can make it worse. Sometimes it can be like a patch over a wound, you know. It's not going to solve the issue because the issue's in your brain, you know. And Kanye West was written off. Oh, that is crazy. No, what he says, uh, you can't believe it, this and that. Because he's inspiring people and that scares the governments and 
powers that be and people in power, whoever they are. Um, it goes on to the subject of Project Parenthood. It's where he wants to help orphanages and he is against, as he is so against abortion, he wants to help orphanages um, and kids have a good life. Those who are not fortunate enough to have a stable home. Which is great, it's a great cause. That's brilliant that is, because it's often forgotten about, you know. And of course, having said that, he, he goes on to the fact that the media really tells people what to care about and what to believe. Because there'll be war and famine and things going on around the world that we won't even know about. And then when something happens close to home, we'll start like doing things to help. But there's so many things you don't know about and the media hides from you and tells you what to really care about to suit their own agenda. You forget what the real issues of the world are and what matters in life. They make you so obsessed with money and making money and they put fear, like COVID, they put fear on people, you know, and stop you saying what you want and doing what you want, you know. I mean, he does believe in world peace, having said all that, you know. Um, but he's very intense. There's a lot he says at once, so many ideas. I mean, he said he's a bit like an Instagram feed, like so many images all at once coming at you. And it, it's a pretty good analogy, really. But yeah, I respect his, his clothing brand Yeezy, the simplicity of the ideas of his clothing and his trainers and his shoes that he makes, you know, uh, he's making a shoe without laces and without a tongue. And that's just crazy to anyone. He said to himself, people want trainers that, or sneakers, whatever you call them, shoes that go with jeans, because a lot of people wear jeans, you know? And to have a shoe without laces and a tongue, even he himself said it feels weird. But it's the future, you've got to innovate, you know? He wants to innovate new ideas for the future, which is brilliant, you know? And then the thing that really stood out in what he said was that our greatest kryptonite is doubt. And it is. When you don't believe you can do something, you can't. You need to believe you can do it. And he has a belief in a lot of things in himself as well. Not in a cocky way, but in a way that he believes he can make a difference. You know, I mean so much I could say I could be here all day but I'm going to stop here because I couldn't take in the whole podcast it was just way too much way too much going on um, but that's the main part I picked up from it but yeah guys that's a lot to absorb I'm going to end it there on this podcast about Kanye West and hopefully you understand more about him maybe not, and maybe why he's misunderstood because I feel that he is and yeah, this is my my take on it anyway. You might have another take. You might have seen other interviews and podcasts with him, but he doesn't do the, I don't think he's done that many podcasts. But yeah, it was intriguing to see him on there and his view on things. And I didn't realise he cared about people so much. You know, amazing to see. And on this podcast, there's so many people that I'd written off before watching the podcast. And then Joe really gets into the their brain and their understanding of life and their views and then it changes my opinion on that person but it's an honest opinion and he lets you make your own opinion he doesn't force you to believe a certain thing and that's why I'll for, forever be talking about guests that go on this podcast because it inspires me Joe inspired me to do this and here we are guys I want to thank you all for being part of this ever so noisy podcast um, so much background noise it annoys the hell out of me uh, just more work and editing basically um, but yeah thank you guys and I hope that wasn't too much information to take in it was a lot to say I'll be honest I had so many notes it three pages of notes it's the most I've ever done probably for a video but you got to care about what you do and I, I believe in this I hope you believe in me and I hope more importantly you believe in yourself um, because, like he said, our greatest kryptonite is doubt. So don't have doubt. You know, you've got to believe in what you're doing. And I'm here believing. It's been 
almost four years of vlogs and podcasts and the YouTube madness. But yeah, guys, I'm going to end it there. Thank you for joining me once again on what isn't really a long podcast. But it's been a lot that's come out of my mouth. And yeah, I'm going to go and eat now because, yeah, a lot of energy to say this much. Imagine being Kanye West. Anyway, yeah. That's it for me, guys. Thank you. Take it easy, fam. Peace.